Hello everybody, my name is Gago Gladio and welcome back to Civilization 6. Today's video will be about religion. We will talk about religious prerequisites, religion beliefs including the follower, founder, enhancer, and worshipper beliefs, and religious spreading including missionaries, apostles, inquisitors, and gurus. And on a small side note, I will talk about me and my channel, so that will be at the end. Alright, so I will talk about the religious prerequisites. In order to get a religion, you need a great prophet and you need a pantheon, as well as a holy site or stonehenge in order to use the great prophet on in order to attain a religion. In order to gain a great prophet, you need enough profit points, as well as enough religions remaining in the game. As you know, religions are limited to a certain number depending on how many players in the game, as well as the map size. On dual, it is 2, on tiny, 3, small, 4, standard, 5, large, 6, and huge, 7. Now, great prophets all do the same thing. They found a religion. Great prophets, however, differ in their cost. As you can see, Confucius in the classical era costs 60 great prophet points. If you skip the classical era, and someone recruits Confucius, then you may be offered medieval era great prophets, which cost 120 points. And in the Renaissance era, they might cost 240 great points. So getting a great prophet in the classical era is probably your best bet. Now for the second part, the Pantheon. In order to get a Pantheon, you need to accumulate an amount of faith. On standard speed, it is 25. You can accumulate faith through different ways. You can either meet a city-state, which gives you two faiths per turn in the capital. You can have adjacency bonuses, where mountains provide plus one, and two woods adjacent to the holy site provide plus one. Or, you can use the holy site prayers project. As you can see, the holy site prayers, after a few turns, generates approximately 1.6 faith per turn, but it has a range of about 1 to 3 faith per turn, meaning that you can get the Pantheon and the Great Prophet at the same time. When you choose a religion, the religion you choose is just used as an identifier. If I choose Islam, no one else in the game can choose Islam. Now we'll talk about the beliefs. However, I will only talk about the two best beliefs per belief category. The first set of beliefs is the follower beliefs. These beliefs apply to any city that is following this religion. If this religion took a hold in another civilization city, that one city has the benefit of the follower belief that has been chosen by the religion. The second best follower belief is Jesuit education. This is because it allows you to save a lot of production. This can buy all campus and all theater square buildings, which includes the library, the university, the research lab, the amphitheater, the art museum, the archaeological museum, and the broadcast center. All of those buildings apply under this follower belief. The best follower belief is choral music. Now it provides culture equal to the intrinsic faith output. This means that if you increase the faith output, the culture does not increase. Shrines will always give to culture and temples will always give for culture. The reason why this is powerful is because you can double down on your culture with a theater square. As you know, amphitheaters provide two culture and art or archeological museums provide four culture. Yes, shrines and temples don't have the great work slots, but it's essentially like having two theater squares in a single city. Now, when you found a religion, you can choose up to four beliefs. However, when your religion is founded by a great prophet, you can only choose two, the follower belief, and another belief of your choosing that are remaining. If another religion has taken any other belief, your religion cannot have the same belief. Now you can choose one belief from three remaining categories, the founder, the worshiper, and enhancer beliefs. They are separated by their symbols. The worshiper is with two praying hands, the founder is with a book, and the enhancer is with a candle. Worshiper beliefs involve the worship buildings. These are special buildings specific to one religion, and any city following this religion, such as my religion, Islam, can build it. Now, the second best worship building is the Wat. This is because the Wat provides three faith and two science, and two science is pretty much better than almost every other bonus on this list. The only two that it's not better than is the mosque, in which missionaries and apostles get one spread, and the cathedral, which gives one slot for religious art. The, the best worshipper belief is the cathedral. You may argue that the mosque is better than the cathedral, but the cathedral is much better for a cultural victory. If you are not going for a cultural victory, you should go for the mosque, and it should be apparent why. You can get your religion to your cities earlier, and start building these buildings as fast as you can. But the cathedral is better for a cultural victory. This is because religious art is the hardest to theme. Well, the cathedral allows you to store it, as well as get the benefits of the great work. The second great thing about the cathedral is that the religious art stored in the cathedral cannot be stolen by a spy. Yes, since someone else might have the religious art, and they might need your religious art to get the theming bonus, but they cannot get it because it's safe in your cathedral. The next set of beliefs is the founder beliefs, and these only affect the founding sieve. So, for this religion, it would only affect me. 
The second best founder belief is cross-cultural dialogue. This is because in close proximity to other civilizations, you can easily spread your religion. You may also convert other civilizations that do not have a religion because they will have the least resistance. The best founder belief is Tith, in which you get plus one gold for every four followers of the religion. This includes your own cities, and this includes city-states. So if you have nearby city-states, I could, with religious pressure, pressure these cities, and once they reach a certain population threshold, I will get the gold benefit. With Tith, you may get additional gold from your own civilization. As you make your own civilization bigger, more of your citizens will follow Tith, and thus you will get more gold per turn. The last set of beliefs are the Enhancer Beliefs. These beliefs affect all cities following the religion. Now, the second best Enhancer Belief is arguably Crusade. This is because pl getting plus 10 common strength in a foreign city is very beneficial. Now, Crusade is somewhat hard to maintain against religious civilizations. They will actively try with Inquisitors to keep their own religion up so that you do not get this bonus. But Crusade is powerful nonetheless. It is especially powerful in civilizations without religions. However, they may declare war on you and remove the heresy of your religious units. The best enhancer belief is Defender of the Faith. This is because Defender of the Faith is far easier to maintain and keep in control than Crusade. Your cities already have an inherent pressure bonus towards your religion, since they are very close to each other. You can also use Inquisitors to remove any other religion that is trying to take control of your city, and thus gain this plus 10 comet strength bonus at all times. And thus, it can help you if you're trying to survive against higher tech enemies. Now I will talk about religious spreading. You can spread your religion either from religious pressure from your cities or from religious units. However, religious pressure usually takes significantly longer than units. So we will be focusing on units. There are four religious units, the missionary, apostle, guru, and inquisitor. When you purchase a religious unit, the cost of the unit increases empire-wide. For apostles, it is 30 faith. For the missionary, guru, and inquisitor, it is 10 faith. The missionary is the basic religious unit. This unit is best in the early game to spread your religion to your own cities. If you want a religious victory, this is the best unit for spreading your religion to other civilizations. To be truthful, the apostle is the best. But you can spam the missionary since it is significantly cheaper than the apostle. Missionaries cannot attack enemy religious units, however, they can defend. But keep in mind, you lose religious pressure when you're defending from an attack. You only gain religious pressure either if you attack a religious unit or you defeat a religious unit, either by attacking or defending. The missionary also has 100 religious strength. It has three religious spreads and usually four movement. It has increased religious spreads of movement because of my golden age. The second religious unit is the guru. The guru can heal religious units. However, in order to heal, you must press this button. The guru isn't useful for defending, but it can if it wishes. The apostle is the single best religious unit. However, it is very costly. It can evangelize your belief, which adds another belief. It can launch an inquisition, which allows you to purchase inquisitors, and it has unique promotions. Additionally, if you have moksha and you have patron saint, apostles get an extra promotion. So if I promote this guy right now, I could promote him again. However, they will usually be different promotions than the first set of promotions. The last religious unit is the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor has 75 strength, usually 4 movement, and usually 3 spreads. But it has 30 additional strength when it is in your own cities with your own religion, such as this city. This is an ideal cheap way to fight enemy apostles. You can either use masses of Inquisitors, or you can just hide them in your city, and when your city converts, you can convert them back using the Inquisitor. This is a very cheap alternative compared to the missionary. So, if you do have the faith, and you're making new cities, I would highly recommend you use Inquisitors instead of Missionaries. Thank you all for watching my guide on religion. I am aware that it is a somewhat basic guide, so please, if you know all this already or if you have questions, please ask questions in the comments. Like, how many Inquisitors should I have or something or something else I would not have time to mention in this video. So please, ask questions, and I hope this helps you get good. Alright, so this is the part of the video where I talk about my channel. I decided to do a guide today because... I felt more confident about myself. It's not because of the hype of Rising Storm. I, I understand that a few YouTubers will do a little more with Rising Storm. And yes, I am hyped for Rising Storm. I actually do want to play Rising Storm, especially Canada. But no, that's not why I came back. I came back because I feel a little bit better. Like, that's the simplest answer I could give you. I feel a little bit better and I feel like I can get back to making videos. At least for now. I really am sorry for just going on and off 
I know that I, I've said all this in previous videos before. I know that some of you may not need these videos. I mean, I really do hope you guys ask questions at the end because I truly don't know if you guys already know all of this and need a different kind of information. But uh, I just hope you guys are enjoying this. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helps you get good.